You know how, for the better part of your life, you've been told who you are and you've accepted that story from the outside. And then I said to myself, I don't want to accept that story anymore. I want to be a part of who tells that story. And I felt a great place to start would be with a talk show and have a platform that could, have, that could communicate generally with Nigerians and Africans across, you know, um, across the continent and even across the world. You're passionate about this issue of, of, of grabbing the narrative. Mm -hmm. For whose sake is this? Is this for the outside world? Is this for the Nigerian and the African who, whose stories are being told? Who exactly is it? So telling the story for me has been, yes, starting the talk show, but then outside of starting the talk show, there were other prompts that, okay, a talk show is not enough anymore. You need, it, you need to do more to spread this message. We do need to tell a global story. Because if you don't own your narrative, nobody can tell me about me better than me or you better than you. As you look at all of this, the, the, the content that everyone watches around the world, mm -hmm. you're just having something that people here can relate to. No, no, I, I think the content we've created is fascinating for anyone, anyone to watch. But you forget whose name is on the building. She's Mrs. Castle and she's my daughter. It's in the domain of the law. Well, it's not a domain of this firm. We don't do pro bono. Oh, I do. These are African stories that are going to go out to massive global audiences. We have a huge amount of history to share. And I've said it time and time again, you know, Africa has remained creatively silent forever. So there's such an abundance, a treasure trove of stories that we have to share with the world. Yes, Nollywood is 20 years old and Nollywood, you know, has come such a long way and, you know, it's, we're making such incredible stories now. But it's now about how do we take some of those stories, give them a global, wrap them up in a global presence so that the world can appreciate them for what they are. So that's what I think is the next big step and we haven't really done that yet. But we need to start doing that so that our stories can truly, truly travel. And that's the journey that we are on. Yeah. That we will one day have a blockbuster that is as big as Black Panther. Because you have gone into, into film, you've got Ebony Ebony, films. there's Ebony, yes. So Ebony Life Films came by chance. I was turning 50 nearly five years ago, and um, I decided that rather than just have a party, let's have a film premiere, and let's make a movie um, around these incredible women that were turning 50, and what would they be going through? <laughs> If you call me one more time, I'm going to change my number. You will respect me, young lady. I am your mother. Just go home. What home? Home to your wife. It went to the cinemas and it did extremely well. Um, and then Netflix picked it up. Um, and then we're like, oh, I was like, oh, wow. Let's do another film. And let's do another film. And let's do another film. And among these, you have three of the top grossing films. I know. In Nigeria. I know. It is incredible. I mean, I have to pinch myself. And clearly you've been able to hack the system because you are, it's working for you. It, it's, um, it's, it's working. But the existing or the popular business model when it comes to media and film doesn't seem to be sustainable in the rest well, of the country. I, I, I think Nigerian films are doing pretty well in the box office now. They're actually holding their own compared to even some of the international films that are coming in. Um, but to talk about what are the things that we do, it starts and begins with the story. Why would you drop me off? Come on, come on, driver. Chief Daddy! Go, 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 bring water. I think a big part of it is that, you know, we, we have access to a great talent pool. And I think now Ebony Life has built a, we have a brand now, so that when we release our films, we already have an audience waiting. So it's about, you know, how do we operate in this environment? You know, who are our sponsors, our advertisers, and um, how do we monetize to make sure that we can run a profitable business? Another platform you're chasing is also video on demand. We are talking to a number of investors about how do we expand that, because to be successful, um, in, in, in that business, you need to invest huge amounts of money in content development. Are we going after Netflix? Are we going after Amazon? No, we're not. You know what? We know that there is a market to be had. There's a niche market out there that wants 
African stories that speaks to them, you know, and we want to be one of those providers that they can trust, that they know that if they come to the platform, they're going to find interesting stories that they can relate to, that have good production value um, and that they believe in. So Ebony Life Studios basically now invests huge amounts of money and resources in developing stories. As you back these films, as you invest in them, what would you say to a filmmaker um, about what would sell to an investor? Um, what I would say to filmmakers is that you need to find relatable stories. You need to have good and great talent. You need to have good production values. You need to focus on great post-production. Sound is very important. Grading is very important. Um, those are the elements that make for good filmmaking. Um, then marketing. How are you going to market this? So anyone that you want to invest in your film needs to know that you can tick all of those boxes.